So, how you design a surgical approach for any fracture? So, we have to take these points for consideration. One is the anesthesia uh, and the ease of positioning, whether the approach is extensile and it is easily can be convertible when the situation arises, and the surgical site morbidity, whether it is dependent or non dependent. So, anterior approach advantages are the position. So, we can have a comfortable position, we can have a 60 degree abduction, we can sit and operate, very useful and very, very useful for the access to our image, very useful to move the CM around the uh, patients to get a good picture per op. See, another is the convertibility. Whenever we need it, we can convert into a delta pectoral approach through, through so small submuscular windows. So another is the, is the muscle sparing approach. There is, much dam there is not a much damage to the soft tissue and compared to the posterior approach, and we can travel through the safe internervous plan plane. And it is very comfortable for anesthetic colleagues. We should always take them into account, especially in the obese patients and the critically ill patients and in a polytrauma patients. It is easy for our anesthetic friends to access the airway. The posterior approach is two. One is the tricep splitting. Nowadays, a lot of tricep sparing approach that is a paratricepital approach. It is an extensive approach. We need a large amount of soft tissue dissection. And always there is the man, that is the radial nerve whenever we go through posteriorly. Another is the big problem is the disadvantage, especially in the middle third humerus fracture. It may be very useful for distal humerus, but in the middle third, the positioning the patient is becoming very cumbersome, and moving our image around the fracture site during parap is becoming very difficult. So nowadays, MIPO has come. That is a, a non-invasive method, and it can be performed by experienced surgeon. We should be very always careful in placing the MIPO screws, especially it will be very close to the radial nerve. Helical plating of the proximal humerus nowadays advocated by the gardener. The two nerves at risk, one is the uppermost axillary nerve and down we have mus musculocutaneous nerve. So we here we place the place laterally in the upper side and the anteriorly in the uh, lower segment. So complication profile by the sub surgical approach, this is a large study. We can see a higher complication rate, especially in the posterior approach. That is nearly 39.2% in the group one when compared to 12.5% uh, uh, of the group 2, which is the anterolateral approach. Another simple study uh, done by uh, Swiss people, the radial nerve palsy is about 3.6% in the anterior approach, while it is 16.7% in the posterior approach, but there is no statistical difference in considering the union of the bone. And another study uh, by the Florida people, the, you can see in the surgical approach, especially in the posterior, we get only nine patients of radial nerve palsy, but in the anterolateral approach, there is only 25, uh, 25 patients the radial nerve palsy. So this is another study from the New York. Here also the same. The radial nerve palsy is much less common in the anterolateral approach than compared to the post posterior uh, sorry tricep sparing and our posterior tricep splitting approach. So both anterolateral as well as the posterior approach can cause nerve damage, but it is very common in the posterior approach. So how I do it? Simple skin incision. A morning externally demonstrated by my friend Devendra. Just uh, uh, retract the biceps medially, erase the brachialis, expose the fracture site, clamp it, fix it. When you want to see the radial nerve, you can see you should be very careful in retracting, especially in the distal when it comes from the medial to the lateral side. So we should use the retractors very carefully. We should use the clamps very carefully. Always our clamp should be very close to the bone. Uh, always try to visualize the radial nerve if possible or Retract it very carefully. Always keep the simple arithmetic calculation where the radial nerve crosses the uh, uh, bone. So why I prefer medial plating? I come to the second part. So the medial surface, you can see in the picture, the both the lateral as well as the posterior surface is uneven when you place the plate. But when you place the plate in the medial surface, it is uniform. It is very easy to do. And it is also a safe zone. So biomechanical study by the Chinese also has proved, by for a Chinese study also proved that anteromedial plating was far superior than anterolateral plating in, set, set, in set, certain aspects. So the anteromedial plating is clinically safe and effective way to treat a humeral sharp fractures. So this is the clinical examples. I always do an anteromedial plating. So this is the, this is the way I, the approach easily convertible. We can go up, we can go down. We can have an easy access.
is a good union its final case 4 so uh, this is a floating type of elbow injury we had a fracture shaft as well as the fracture both bone forearm and excellent clinical results for the plate is placed anteromedially is another elderly male fixed with the anteromedial plating along with the lax screws and uh, this is another case of anteromedial plating this is a case example just i am going running through my clinical cases this is a uh, uh, what do you call a delayed union of these cases so this also i did an anteromedial plate we can see the excellent clinical result at the end so this is a young male who had a humerus fracture even though it is upper the lateral plating is but but i still i did an anteromedial plating the result is good so this is another floating another uh, ipsilateral shaft of humerus and the both bone forearm we can see the fixation and the excellent results so what are the advantages of a humeral anteromedial plate in the middle third fracture in the large study of nearly 420 patients radiopalsy test revealed significantly in higher frequencies in patients who are treated by anterolateral plate than the uh, anteromedial plate so anterolateral plating also needs a longer operation time than anteromedial plating so another study in the treatment of the middle third humerus shaft fracture with the am anteromedial plate osteosynthesis this is the nearly total number 54 patients uh, it is they have proven that it is less time consuming and has got a less complication and it produces excellent functional outcome the main concern of the iatrogenic nerve injury to the radial nerve was not encountered in the procedure in the present in their study and another study from the ramachandra university also is a it's a iatrogenic nerve palsy appears to be very common complication but in this case three of 20 fracture shaft of humerus treated with am plating through al approach there was no radial palsy in their study so in the comparative study by anand kumar and at all we can see the incidence of the radial nerve palsy in the anterolateral plating is 5 uh, while in the case of an anteromedial plating is nil so to conclude my talk so anterolateral approach and anteromedial surface plating is less time consuming it has got a less complication and produces excellent outcomes the iatrogenic radial nerve injury is very less in this approach so i consider this approach and this method of plating is ideal for middle third of the shaft of the humerus so all great things all great achievements come by continuous learning and working hard as my chief professor ashok kumar always say thanks for giving this opportunity and thanks prahlad for this opportunity thank you